Well, <clears throat> you know we're in cupcake week of college football, so you know there's a little bit of there's a little bit of downtime between these games. So I wanted to talk, you know, a little bit. You know, basketball, yeah, yeah. You thought I wasn't gonna do that, but I've been keeping I've been keeping up. I told y'all I was gonna keep up. I've been keeping up with some of this stuff in, in the scenes of you know the NBA. And both men's and women's college basketball. First things first, um, the LA Clippers, you know, they got James Harden at trade and everything like that. They, they have just not been looking not been looking great since that trade. You know, they've had consecutive losses. They had like a four game losing streak. Um it's not looking good so far. I don't know what's going on. The boys ain't gelling together super, super well. You know what I'm saying? The boys have not been gelling together very very well and that's 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 not a recipe you want to succeed with if you get what i mean that's not a recipe you want to succeed with um so something's gonna have to be done you know about that because again the clippers are four and seven not where you want to be you're at, technically right now you're at 11th place in the west so you know that's outside of even a play in tournament berth, you know. Um, there's also the whole Draymond Green thing. Yeah, it unfortunately we all know Draymond Green cannot. <laughs> he's he's a dirty player. I mean, let's let's just be real. He's a, he's a great defensive player, but he also plays really really dirty sometimes. And this is another example of choking the life out of Rudy Gobert for absolutely no reason. Yeah. Things got a little crazy on the court during that Timberwolves um, Warriors game, but you know, a couple days ago. But like, good God, control yourselves! Like, like everybody got to control themselves in that situation. Five games is enough. I think Rudy Gobert got fined too, which is crazy. You know, um, so yeah. Um, load management is also setting in in the NBA already. I mean. I get it. A lot of guys are getting, you know, banged up a little bit early already. Most teams have played like 10 to 13 games so far. Um, a lot of guys, you know, even on teams that aren't as great, you know, like for example, a couple, you know, like for example, a couple weeks ago, you know, we were talking about the Grizzlies, you know, they weren't, they weren't playing so, you know, well, actually, no. What am I saying? Uh, the Grizzlies, like the Grizzlies, they, have won a couple games that they started like 0-6, but they've won a couple games, you know, with some of the guys they've been playing, you know, and everything like that. The Rockets, you know, Sengun, you know, playing really well. The Rockets, you know, again, I didn't expect this team to be where they are right now, but here they are. Um, who else? The Suns, I mean, the Suns are inconsistent. They have the talent there. They're just inconsistent. You know, top dogs in the West right now are my Dallas Mavericks. And, of course, the reigning defending undisputed NBA champions, the Denver Nuggets at the top. In the East, you know, you have the typical players. You know, Bam Adebayo has been playing a really, really solid basketball, by the way. No low management for him. But Jim Butler, I think, has had like a game or two off. And maybe I think Bam's had like one game that he's missed too. Um, you know, again, low management has been, you know, it's been kind to some teams. It's been has been kind to others. You know, teams like the Celtics, the 76ers, and the Bucks are all at the top of the East right now. And again, most teams have played, not including tonight. The games will start at five o'clock Central tonight. Um, there's like six of them tonight. You know, most teams have played like ten to thirteen games. Other guys like Asar Thompson for the Detroit Pistons has been really playing well. Um, the Hornets, LaBello Ball has been the, the guy for the Hornets, even though the Hornets aren't very good. Uh, the Raptors, Scotty Barnes has been a, you know, and, and I'm not just speaking from a, you know, perspective of how much impact these guys have been having. I'm speaking, you know, from a perspective of, you know, what kind, what kind, of, what kind of league we're looking at for the rest of the year. You know, you have guys like Scotty Barnes showing out. You have... The Atlanta Hawks are in a good position right now. Um, Julius Randle, you know, last year he didn't he didn't look like 
you know, a dominant guy. But this year he's been playing so much better basketball. You know, crazy stuff. You know, Jokic is Jokic. Luka is Luka. You know, I mean, I don't think you expect SGA and the Thunder to be, you know, where they are right now, like top four in the West. But again, it's still early, very early in the NBA season. We got a long way to go. Only about a sixth of the games have been played. So we got a long way to go. Um, as far as men's college basketball goes, JMU is ranked because they beat Michigan State. Well, you know, Michigan State has had the gauntlet so far. You know, they played Duke. You know, now they have a, you know, a game against JMU. They just played. They just played Butler last night. Beat the brakes off of Butler, surprisingly. Um, again, that gauntlet of the sketch was going to help them as, you know, the Big Ten is, again, looking like a conference that's, you know, you know, we've been talking about it, you know, we talked about it a couple weeks ago and everything like that. Um, you know, you have Zach Eddy, and I think another big dude just committed to Purdue as well, like another seven-foot guy just committed to Duke, I mean, not Duke, Purdue as well. So, you know, things are going to continue to be crazy for Purdue basketball. Um I have played some pretty good basketball. Um, Michigan's okay. They got a they got a guy by the name of Doug. I think that's been playing some good basketball. Arizona, you know, has the best win in all of college basketball right now. Yes, Kansas is number one, but they have the best. But Arizona has the best win with the game against Duke, which was a thriller. I only caught the very end of that game, but Arizona, with the talent they have. They were able to defeat Duke, and they've been able to stay inside the top five, you know, right now. So we're still kind of early, but Feast Week is coming. Battle for Atlantis, the Maui Invitational, the Empire Classic um, featuring my Texas Longhorns, and a mid-Louisville team, you know, speak, and speaking of Michigan, they just lost to Long Beach State, I think, last night. So, you know, there's that. Isn't that crazy? So, you know, the Big Ten set, you know, the Big Ten's going to be hard to really kind of figure out right now because it's still November, but we'll figure it out when we get there. Um, but yeah, Feast Week, you know, Maui is going to be crazy. I'd say even the ESPN events invitational uh, with like Florida Atlantic and AM, you know, in that tournament there, that's going to be a little interesting. The Empire Classic. If it's not Texas versus UConn on Monday, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. I'm really going to cry because, you know, Louisville is not good and Indiana's okay. You know, Indiana clearly lost production from last year and Louisville is Louisville. They haven't been very good at all lately. So, and it, again, that that Maui field, which is going to be in, I think, Hawaii because of the um, – the fires and stuff like that over in Maui. Um, stacked field, very stacked field. Tennessee is in the top 10. Syracuse is still, you know, Syracuse. You know, you can't, just because Jim Beheim is gone doesn't mean you can't out Syracuse, Syracuse, you know. Uh, Purdue, again, it was, that's going to be fun, fun matchup against Gonzaga to open it up. Uh, you know, Marquette, top four Marquette, just beat Illinois in a big game. UCLA, also a pretty interesting team. And Kansas, yes, Charminade is in this tournament. Honestly, you know, it is what it is. That's just the way the rules work for the Maui Invitational. We all know that Kansas will easily go to a semifinal. We, we, don't, we don't know which, but they will get a tough test, you know, after they – beat Charminade really quick. Again, you know, uh, the battle for Atlantis, not as crazy as it has been. Uh, for Villanova, not as good as they used to be. They lost to Penn. Arkansas also had a loss, I think. Texas Tech is in this tournament. Michigan, Memphis, again, Michigan just lost to Long Beach State. Memphis is peaking, you know, at, at a really interesting time because – you know, again, they're in the AAC, and you know who 
is in the AAC, Florida Atlantic, you know. So that's going to be interesting. Again, Michigan State, the gauntlet continues during Thanksgiving week against Arizona. So, again, it kind of correlates there. Um, and, yeah, that's really all I'm looking forward to for Feast Week. Um, like after Feast Week, you know, you know, you had the Champions Classic. Feast Week is, you know, it's it's here. It's uh, almost here. We're not too far away from it with like 75 plus games over 100 hours of basketball. Lots of tournaments to be happening and going on. But after that, you know, I'd say GBB Classic. The week of Army Navy, the first week of bowls, you know, those those weeks are going to be pivotal right there. You know, th- those two Saturdays in December are going to be very pivotal right there. Before you know, before I come back to y'all talking basketball again by Christmas, you know, so those two those two weeks especially are going to be very very good. Um, just to kind of you know really talk about them a little bit. It's just a lot of stack stuff there for those two Saturdays after the college football conference championship weeks and everything. As far as women's college basketball goes, oh boy, South Carolina, you know, they dominated Notre Dame in London, or not London, in Paris, actually, not, not London. They dominated Notre Dame in Paris. They beat the brakes off of Clemson. They, um, they, they have a really, really good, just a really, really good, you know, resume so far and everything like that. They beat Maryland, too, remember? And, I mean, look, this, this South Carolina team is going to have, you know, maybe a couple games. I'd say the ACC-SEC Challenge, which is also, you know, in betwixt all that stuff I said about the Jimmy B Classic and, and, and Feast Week. You know, so the ACC SEC challenge. Do not forget about that either, um, for both men's and women's basketball. Do not forget about that. So there's still some tough games for South Carolina down the road, um, before you know we really get into it. Utah is going to be interesting again. That's going to be a Sunday in December. You know, before you know, we get into it. So South Carolina could very well be number one going into the new year. Uh, but that that's just me saying stuff. And again, this, this South Carolina team is really balanced. They scored 100 points in each of their three games so far. They have a couple of easy games coming up before their game against North Carolina and then their game against Duke. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see where South Carolina goes from here. Again, the upsets, the parity in women's college basketball is starting to shake things up. Uh, for example, um, UConn lost to NC State. Iowa lost to Kansas State earlier this week. Um, Utah lost to Baylor. You know, top four Utah still lost to Baylor. You know, so... That's gonna be. That's gonna. This is this is the type of stuff women's college basketball needs, and that's gonna keep eyes on the product. It's gonna keep eyes on the prize. This is, you know, if you get what I mean, because women's college basketball is very fun. It's not. It's not a game where you can just ah. Uh, well, all they do is shoot bricks and everything. No, no. Women be hooping. So I'll say that. And then, you know, Angel Reese got benched. Now people are going all off on social media and everything like that. So y'all chill. Y'all relax. It's it, y- y- Y'all just relax. Things are fine. I know LSU also had an early season loss, but it's okay. Everything is okay. And I told y'all, well, we're, we're not really going to get, you know, maybe South Carolina could be the team that probably runs the gauntlet and goes all the way with it, but I don't think we're going to have an undefeated in the women's game this year, like I said. And, you know, it's, it's, it's time to feast. I'm ready to feast. Are you all ready to feast? Because we got a lot of basketball this week. Cannot wait to watch it all. I will see you all in December as far as, you know, talking 
basketball, everything could get into the new year, you know, because times are a changing. So Turkey Week, it's been fun. It's been fun. Hope you all enjoy all this basketball like I will. Um, I'll have some polls, you know, out, you know, throughout the week and everything like that. Just to, just to kind of get the gauge on it. So get the gauge on things. Tomorrow, something special. It's finally time to talk indoor arena football. It's finally time. The update, the update of all updates is here. I cannot wait. I'm putting the final touches on my slides and everything like that so we can go over everything. We have to go over every single detail to talk about it tomorrow. So again, y'all take care. Get ready for all this basketball starting tomorrow. Feast week starts tomorrow. So if you're bored during those late NFL games, which I might not even take a gander at those late games, honestly. But if you're bored during those late games, get on that Empire Classic out in New York, baby. Watch my horns go up against, I think it's Indiana. I think they're going up against Indiana or Louisville. It depends. I don't care. I don't care who. Hook them, baby. Let's go. We, we, um, I'm going to get at y'all's hair before I keep rambling.